I know firsthand how much diesel truck owners seem to have a hate on for EV trucks. It's a unique perspective, actually. According to comments, I'm a snowflake fanboy, Kool-Aid drinking leftist, libtard, Biden humping, butt hurt whining, union loving EV shill Tesla worshipper. But what's even funnier is the EV crowd refers to me as a dinosaur, gas guzzling, redneck, rig pig, backwaters, yeehaw, musk bashing Tesla hater. I guess I must be doing something right or something wrong. Hmm. But you know what? I get it. I do. There are reasons why truck lovers, especially diesel pickup truck owners, feel under attack and ignored when they point out why they think electric trucks just aren't there yet. In fact, I found 10 of them. So what brought about all this anger for a new technology? Did we have this when we went from cassette to DVD to streaming, ah! from rotary dial to digital to flip to smartphone? Or is there something bigger going on? Diesel pickup truck owners are being told that electric trucks are not only coming, but they're here, and that they're as good, if not better. Really? Before anyone goes demanding change on an entire way of life for so many people, they better make sure they're right. And at the end of this video, I've got another number that throws a wrench into the gears that manufacturers are keeping a little quiet on. But first, the list. Number 10 is clearly the lack of configurations with every electric truck currently available. Think about it. Is it just me or have the EV truck crowd forgotten that currently only diesel trucks provide the wide range of options for almost every application you can think of? Let's look. What's out there right now as an EV alternative? The Rivian R1T has a bed length of a paltry four and a half feet or 1.4 meters. Hummer EV is just as bad. Cybertruck's bed is 1.8 meters or six feet. And the F-150 Lightning has the same bed size as the standard F-150 Super Crew at five and a half feet or 1.7 meters. None of any of these trucks come in any other configuration. Long box, short box, crew cab, single cab, super crew, tidy tank, dual tanks, dualies in the back, fifth wheel, locking diffs, one ton, three ton, five ton. None of the above. And what do electric truck makers have to say about this? Okay already. We're, uh, we're working on it as soon as we, uh, uh, we ramp up. Uh-huh. Number nine is the lack of of reliability. One thing to be said about the diesel engine, they're darn near bulletproof. Few means of locomotion have ever been as reliable. Truck guys have heard horror stories about frozen electric batteries, EV trucks bursting into flames, taking forever to charge, and costing tens of thousands of dollars to replace the battery pack. Sure, a lot of that is exaggerated or in some cases wholly fabricated from one kernel of truth, but there is no doubting the rock solid feeling one gets that your diesels got your back. Number eight, EV trucks have no proof of longevity. According to diesel parts supplier, ProSource Diesel, not until the average diesel truck reaches half a million miles is it considered high mileage. <laughs> Go figure. With proper maintenance, they can last far beyond double the mileage of a gas engine. We have no such track record on lithium ion batteries. And there's a lot of fear over not only their reliability, but cost of replacement. Yes, we've had Model S's now out there for a dozen years or so, and the batteries seem to be doing better than gas counterparts for longevity in the few examples that we have, but <laughs> come on, a Model S is not a truck. And sure, EV makers are already claiming million mile batteries are on the way, or they're already producing them, but this technology is in its infancy and we simply don't have any verifiable evidence that that, in fact, is the case. Number seven, lack of serviceability. How many truck mechanics are there in your town? In any given town, how about diesel mechanics? Yeah, there's a lot. How many certified electric truck mechanics are there? Uh, exactly. And worse, the lineups for repair, even through the EV manufacturers themselves, is lame at best. Many of these OEMs restrict right to repair on the vehicles because they are so software and sensor driven. Diesels rarely break down, but when they do, it doesn't take a long time to get them up on the road fixed. The same can't be said for an electric truck, not yet. Number six brings to the forefront what diesel guys have been saying all along. You can't modify these electric contraptions, not yet, or at least not well. Ever try putting a flat bed on a triangle? Mm -mm. How about a street sweeper mod or a tow truck rig? Three out of four available EV trucks are unibody. You can't readily modify it or simply remove the bed and bolt on something else. These things are stuffed full of tech 
And Cybertruck can't even handle aftermarket mods because it's a 48 volt architecture, which means none of the standard aftermarket add-ons will work on it. In all my years of working around and seeing diesel pickup trucks, I have rarely seen any one of them that's been kitted out the same way. They're all unique. Whatever application you need, you can find a way to do it with a diesel. The reason for that century old design is simple. It works. Congratulations. You did it. You're at the halfway point, and I hope you'll consider clicking a quick like. And if you would like more content like this, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification icon. Thanks again. Number five is about power, but in all the wrong places. Do those who use a truck as a truck really need to, uh, to race a Porsche? Does my ride that is intended for towing a flatbed, hauling a front end loader, really need all the focus being given to breaking a 10 second quarter mile or going from zero to 60 in under three seconds? No, of course not. The fact that these are so-called selling points demonstrates that electric trucks were never intended to deliver that power in the way that truck owners need it. And that brings us to number four. EV trucks suck at towing on many fronts, sure, they have seemingly unlimited torque, off the line and right through acceleration, which means you barely feel the trailer you're towing. And it is impressive, I have an electric truck. Too bad you can't go more than 100 miles before you're stuck on the side of the road. <laughs> the Cybertruck barely made 90 miles in a recent video by Jerry Rig Everything. This was their top of the line foundation series one. Even in a recreational setting, strap a fifth wheel camping trailer on an electric truck, uh, that's if you can, and you'll not only exceed its tongue weight maximums, You'll have to take that thing off every time you need to fill up because there's no pull through chargers anywhere. From any practical perspective, diesel truck guys are right. The electric truck simply can't do this job and likely won't be able to until both the capabilities and the charging infrastructure improve, which likely aren't coming for quite some time. Number three. It's pretty obvious once you've heard all the previous reasons that diesel pickup truck owners have concerns about. That's hauling. Diesel trucks can not only outhaul an electric truck from a payload perspective in almost every scenario, but combine that with the range weakness, the bad charging infrastructure, the limited bed configurations, and it becomes crystal clear that if you have a load in your bed more than a couple times a week and you're driving over 200 miles per trip, the only ride that's going to step up and get the job done is a gas or diesel pickup truck, period. So what's number two? The decades old EV threat to the average pickup truck guy. Oh yeah, the fighting words I read online didn't actually start from diesel truck owners. The gauntlet was thrown down by EV maker CEOs. When electric trucks first made their debut to consumers in 2021, there had already been well over a decade of EVs driving around and a lot of the marketing and messaging surrounding those vehicles had to do with putting an end to gas vehicles. In fact, it became clear via statements from the likes of Elon Musk and others that EVs spelled the demand demise of all gas vehicles. That's a direct slap in the face for people who have reliably used their trucks for decades to get the job done. And even more so being that the same individuals throwing around such threats had literally nothing comparable to replace them with. Telling someone that their beloved wheels are crap? Well, that's not gonna create any kind of hippie kumbaya bongo playing love-in moment if you get my drift. Ta-da! You made it again, you trucked up superstar. You're here at number one. Oh, uh, what you want? It's the most obvious one, of course. Diesel truck owners love their trucks for all the reasons above, but when government legislation comes along, and tells you that your beloved pickup will no longer be allowed in the future, that it's obsolete, all while having nothing viable in the marketplace to replace it with, well, who wouldn't get a little hot under the collar? They keep hearing about what's to come, but think about it. Is there anything right now that comes close at this point? If an ultimatum is delivered and there is simply nothing comparable on the market to replace it with, it makes every diesel guy point out the obvious hypocrisy of the whole exercise. As I've said in previous videos, the only way we're ever going to get to a point where EV trucks are widely accepted is if there is honest and practical dialogue and appreciation for what needs to happen first before America ever hopes to move the diesel workhorse into the electric space. I promised you a critical number that truck manufacturers don't really want you to think about. And the primary reason why there is no competitive electric option to the gas or diesel pickup truck. That number 
is 80. Let me explain. Truck OEMs know that their primary buyer of trucks don't use trucks as trucks, 80% of them. And if real truck owners knew the massive profits Ford, GM, and Stellantis deliberately padded into the price by leveraging trucks as luxurious upscale SUVs as their primary target, something every truck owner now has to pay a premium for to support that market. A lot of people might not be as happy about the slow progression of electric trucks after all. Many Cybertruck YouTube influencers openly admit they've never previously owned a truck. And Tesla has proudly stated that most of their Cybertruck reservations are from people who have never owned a truck. Get the picture? These aren't trucks in the true sense of the word. Most people pitching the Rivian, Lightning, Hummer EV, or Cybertruck are never applying these things to real-world truck applications. That's because no one is actually targeting the work truck guy. They don't care. They can make massive profits off the 80% and another huge margin off the small percentage and know that such a buyer likes what they get, and will wait decades for technological improvements such as electrification. The market is too small and the non-truck convert consumer far larger in scope and more profitable. I think that developing new technologies for trucks, especially electric, is a good thing for every truck owner, regardless of what type of power they choose to buy. But until a manufacturer decides to actually go after the other 20% of the market that actually uses their wheels for hardcore work, we can all accept that diesel will be around for a while. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like more on how we can bridge the divide between EV truck haters and fanboys, check out my rant video right here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.